you know, I think we'll see something new before we see currency go to zero. And unfortunately, you know, um, these kind of end of empires or c- currency regimes usually end in war. Um, it's a scapegoat, it provides a scapegoat for them. Well, I think that's the moment that, you know, you run, not walk to get some physical metal if you don't have any. The, the number one thing I think we should be focused on is um, interest rates, uh, specifically the benchmark 10-year yield, as that yield has just you know exploded from 0.36% of March of 2020 up to over 3% now. And I believe that March of 2020 marked the end of a 40-year bull market in bonds and in debt instruments in the US. And that's significant because if you go back 40 years, that means most money managers, institutional investors, they've never been, they've never uh, lived through an era of rising interest rates. And it, that changes everything. It changes you know, the price of money. Now that said, nothing continues to move. And we're at an interesting place if you look at a chart uh, where interest rates have run really far, really fast. They're probably due to pull back and consolidate here. But I do think the overall trend has changed and we're going to see higher yields you know, in the years ahead. And that really changes, you know, um, the whole paradigm of the global financial system. Well, uh, the the price of money, the treasury market is the price of money. And when you change the price of money, you change everything. Um, but really what matters even more than nominal yields is real yields. So if the 10 year is at 3.2%, but inflation is at 8%, you've got a negative 5% yield. And that's highly inflationary. Um, and I think that's going to continue. But you know, when when you have nominal rates double like this, or call it five percent uh, as the average thirty-year fixed mortgage right now, that makes housing almost unaffordable. <laughs> what was previously affordable a few months ago now puts just owning a, a medium-priced home out of reach of many Americans. Um, everything is based on debt. Everything. So when you double, you know, when when you see the interest rates rise like this, the last time we saw credit contraction was in 2008, and credit contracted just this little blip on the radar, and it almost took down took down the whole system. So if credit really contracts because of rising rates, it has the potential to take down everything, and that, that's why I don't think the Fed is going to do that or allow that to happen. They're going to reverse course. I'm highly, highly confident of that, and step back in and buy these treasuries to try and force yields back down or at least keep them from rising as fast as they were. When do you think they pivot? Uh, there's a very good chance that if that happens this fall. Um, you know, October timeframe is typically a weak month for general equities. And, you know, I think the Fed likes seeing asset prices under pressure a little bit here because it <clears throat> that's disinflationary. It kind of um, it gives the appearance that they're being successful in their fight against inflation. So they're, I think they're content to little, little, let a little bit of air out of this bubble. <clears throat> but they don't want it to get out of control. So I think, you know, September, October is a decent guess on when they may pivot. But, you know, what's inter- interesting, especially the debt markets and silver and gold markets, commodity markets are forward looking. So I think silver and gold will anticipate this pivot before it actually happens. And we could be starting to see that right now. You know, silver's up a little bit from the lows. Gold is tr- starting to curl up from the lows. Um, that doesn't mean downside risk isn't still present, but um, I, I think the metals market will anticipate the Fed pivot. So this chart goes back to 1980, so over 40 years, and you can see this 40-year downtrend line. This, by the way, is a chart showing the yield on the 10-year Treasury. And look at this peak right here, or excuse me, this drop in March of 2020. Like I said, I believe that drop right there marked the low of a 40-year or the top of a 40-year bull market in bonds. But this rally is really unprecedented. I mean, look at this the steepness of this rally. And if you come up to the top here, this RSI tells you when something's overbought. We haven't been this overbought in yields in 40 years. So it might sound like I'm kind of talking out of both sides of my mouth here. I think over the longer term, yields are going to go higher. But over the short term, I think we're going to see you know a pullback in yields as the Fed begins to um, indicate that they're going to reverse course. They're, they even floated some trial balloons about that last week. Um, Fed, uh, TF Metals calls them Fed goons. I, I kind of like to call them that. Fed goon Bostic um, said, uh, you know, hey, maybe we'll do 50 basis points the next two times, then kind of pause. And I think that was a trial balloon to kind of indicate, see how the market's going to react if, if and when they reverse course. But to do, roll out a new system, they're going to need, um, you know, some kind of um, crisis. But uh, there, we've been saying this for a long time. So this is a major 
convergence that's happening right now, where the Fed is going to have to choose between sacrificing the dollar and allowing inflation to run hot or crushing the economy by fighting inflation. And, you know, all of historical precedent suggests that they always choose to sacrifice the dollar or allow inflation to run hot, as opposed to letting, you know, the economy tank on their watch where they get all the blame. So we're, we're seeing that come. We're coming to a, a crossroads right here, right now, in the next few months, where they're going to have to make that decision. You know, do they let interest rates continue to run and crush the housing market, crush the stock market, you know, crush the debt markets? Or um, do they pivot? and start buying up those treasuries and let, uh, allow inflation to run even hotter than we've seen. And the government always feels like they have to do something instead of letting the free market solve things, which would obviously be the best solution. Just let the free market work. It would sort through these things. But a um, couple thoughts. So so they're pretty much saying, hey, you know, we'll just, we're going to buy low and we're going to sell high. Simple as that. Well, I mean, there's Wall Street professionals who dedicate their entire life to doing just that and are fail at it. So, hey, we're just going to buy low, sell high. If it were that easy, more people would be doing it. But then um, you can go back throughout any government program. <clears throat> Whenever the government declares war on something, you can almost guarantee that you're going to get the exact opposite effect. Uh, for example, back in the 70s, they created the Department of Energy to stabilize oil prices. I mean, oil prices have been pretty darn stable for decades. And then look for oil prices since the 70s. Um, you know, uh, the war on poverty. What's happened since then? Since they declared war on poverty, we have more poverty. War on now terrorism. Than, war, I mean, war. every and the other crazy thing is every time they declare war on something, they print a whole bunch of money. Yes. Yeah. And they get the exact opposite desired effect. Um, I mean, it's like everything they say, you can just take the opposite. Um, Patriot Act, you know, uh, I don't want to get too in the weeds here, but, you know, like that's the exact opposite of patriotism. You know, if you love freedom and const and things like that, but it, it's always the opposite of what they say. So that's my initial thoughts on this task force. I hadn't heard, heard about that. Uh, not to get too gloomy, but I think did you, which in this case is zero, because there's not any metal content or anything, it's just paper. Um, however, you know, we, you and I both know that they've got another system ready to roll out when the time is right. So I don't think, you know, I think we'll see something new before we see currency go to zero. And unfortunately, you know, um, these kind of end of empires or currency regimes usually end in war. Um, it's a scapegoat, it provides a scapegoat for them. Um, you know, these people aren't, aren't stupid. So, you know, th that's likely coming. But to be on the brighter side, back to strategy, you know, it, a lot of people know this stuff. All right. The things we're talking about. But a lot of people don't put as much thought, I think, as they should into what are you going to do? What is your strategy? You need to have a specific strategy. Uh, what asset classes do you have? Do you want to own? What Long-term exit strategy. Um, do you want to trade in and out? Do you want to have a simple buy and hold? These are all things that we should be thinking about and as, a, as opposed to, you know, talking about the problems all the time, which you do a great job of. So for, first of all, with gold specifically on the chart, it was March 8th, just a couple months ago that we marked that $2,078 high. And that's when everyone and their brother wanted to buy gold and gold stocks. You see it all over Twitter and social media. And you know, I, I actually shorted it as, uh, right there for, as a short-term trade saying, hey, we're due for a pullback. And all I wanted to see was a higher high, or excuse me, a higher low. The previous low was 1780. The low on this most recent little dip is 1785. So that's a higher low. So we are still in an uptrend in gold. So the, the trend is intact. It, it feels worse than it actually is in gold specifically. But as far as triggers, I think the next probable one will be the a Fed reverse uh, reversal or pivot back to more easy money. But I think, you know, the big, big catalyst, which I'm not sure when this happens, is when the Fed tries to uh, intervene and it doesn't work. Let's say, you know, interest rates start running higher and they intervene and say, hey, we're going to uh, start buying treasuries again to you know, bring interest rates down or prop up the stock market or whatever. And it has the exact opposite effect. Well, I think that's the moment that you, know, you run, not walk, to get some physical metal if you don't have any. Control what you can control. Worry, you know, uh, but don't worry about things that are out of your control. There's a lot of things that were just, you, you and I have no power to control. So why waste our time and energy focusing on that? What, and we can instead be focused on um, you know, building resilience and learning how to prosper. You can prosper in these environments. We don't want to sound doom and gloomy. Um, there's ways to prosper, uh, to be a blessing for your family and other people. And, you know, that's what we focus on and that's what you focus on.